Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video answering your questions. So leave your comments below what you want to cover in the next video coming up. New videos Monday and Thursday. Like this video. Let's see if we can get a thousand likes, my friends. Today I'm taking a question from my guy Ghost on the. Uh, he's a homie from Twitch. He hangs out on Twitch. We're live streaming on Twitch every single day if you want to check it out. But basically, ask me what's optimal or what's the best way for a power lifter to eat nutrition wise. Um, and to be honest, nutrition is a complicated subject because it does depend slightly on you and your personal goals, your lifestyle, um, and then it also depends on obviously your long-term goals for your activity itself. Power lifters, in general, old school power lifters, are always telling people to eat up, eat up, eat up, Snickers, Cheez-Its, Chex Mix, Coca-Cola, beers, get as big as you can and you will get stronger. And although gaining some weight, body fat or muscle does help, I don't necessarily think that's optimal as powerlifting specifically, if we're talking about what fuels a powerlifter, the best nutrition for a powerlifter, a competitive powerlifter, uh, because it is a weight class sport. For those that are new to powerlifting or don't understand, it's very similar to wrestling um, or other sports of that nature where there's set weight classes, and the biggest you can be per weight class is probably gonna give you a slight advantage, right? If I'm competing in the 181 pound uh, class and I weigh 170, I'm gonna have be at a disadvantage to someone who weighs 182 and cuts down to 181 for that meat. So what we wanna obviously put on, because it's a strength sport, is as much muscle as we can and as little fat. Um, fat obviously isn't uh, as productive as a tissue, it's not as strong and it doesn't move mass like muscle does, but there is some advantage to having a little cushion sometimes depending on your build, your age, your experience, uh, because it can change leverages in how you lift weights. Uh, often if you're a little bit thicker, muscle obviously is doing the movement, but a little bit thicker can help with a bench press, even a squat sometimes. You get some cushion around you uh, and it helps. There's multiple ways that we can get strong. Um, there's pathways to get strong. Uh, one uh, is kind of the efficiency of the movement. So no matter what you do, the more efficient at a movement you become, the better, the, the better right? So um, as a squatter, if you're brand new and your movement pattern isn't very good, learning the skill of the squat and refining the skill of the squat and ingraining that habit over time, over weeks, years, months, uh, tons of repetition makes you a better squatter, right? The skill itself. The same thing with shooting a free throw as a basketball player. The more free throws you shoot, the more the more lined in and that's built into your, uh, uh, your habit, your discipline. The more repetition, the more skill, the better you are at the movement. The other one with uh, powerlifting or strength is muscle itself. The bigger the muscle, the more potential it has, the more output it has. The last one is kind of neural efficiency. Um, throwing, pushing, explosive movements and lifting itself, your connection from your brain to tell your muscles to fire and how hard they fire with your ligaments and tendons is also something that is trained through strength training. And that's obviously what carries over um, the muscle, building the muscle and the, the, the neural efficiency is what carries over to other sports. That's why football players, runners, jumpers, etc., lift weights because they want that neural efficiency so they can put more power, more impact into the ground or into their sport themselves. Now, again, there's three of those are kind of the main things that help us get strong, but to build more muscle, to recover better from training session to training session, to handle more volume, which is sets times reps times weight, which is the most important factor in gaining strength because it hits all of those. More volume builds more muscle. More volume means more repetition, so we're getting better uh, at the movement, the skill itself, and more volume itself allows us to get more repetitions, which also, again, builds that neural efficiency. To recover from those things and to build more muscle, we need to be eating. Um, and hopefully by now you guys understand kind of what calorie maintenance means. It means I'm eating a certain amount of calories a day, a week, a year, that allows me to stay the same body weight I am right now. A calorie deficit means that I'm eating below what my body needs and then thus I will lose weight. And then a calorie surplus means that I'm eating slightly above um, what I need or I guess a bunch above what I need and I then will gain weight. So I think the most efficient nutritional strategy for a power lifter is obviously a calorie surplus depending on your weight class and depending on your experience. When you're a beginner power lifter, you can gain a lot of strength and be very efficient, making tons of mistakes in your programming, your sleep, your food. It doesn't matter. You're going to get stronger. But at some point, you're going to start to plateau. Uh, and the easiest ways to break plateaus are better programming and obviously f getting better at the list, being become more efficient with your technique, but having a calorie surplus. So the optimal, if we're talking optimal, I think we're trying to get 
at least one gram per pound of lean body mass a day of protein. So I weigh about 205 pounds. I don't know exactly what my body fat uh, percentage is, but let's say it's 15. You do a little math, whoop do, ba ba bing, carry the one, uh, MC equals squared or something like that. And then I'm gonna eat about 190 to 200 grams of protein. I'm personally going to err slightly on too much rather than too little. Um, a lot of people say, oh, if you're trying to lose fat or gain weight or whatever, the carbs and fat ratio don't matter. I wouldn't necessarily say that. I think for powerlifting uh, and that type of high intensity sports, carbohydrates are the most efficient way uh, and most efficient energy for our bodies. So I think a slightly higher carbohydrate diet does help a lot of powerlifters, sprinters, and people that play those type of sports. Uh, and then you kind of fill in the rest of your calories with fat. So again, if my maintenance is 2000 calories, we can do some of this math sometime if you guys are really interested, but it is basic math and there is calculators all over the internet. You can type it into Google or check out MyFitnessPal or do it yourself. Um, I have other videos going more into detail, but if we're 2000 calories for maintenance, we wanna eat maybe 2,250, 2,500 calories a day then for a slight surplus. Uh, we're gonna get a certain amount, again, our body weight and protein. Uh, and then we're gonna, we can distribute, kind of distribute the rest how we'd like per our lifestyle and our palate for the carbs and the fat. But I do think a higher carbohydrate diet is gonna help in the long term. Now, things do change when you get a little bit more competitive and you wanna hit a certain weight class, whether going up a weight class or going down a weight class and dieting and things of that nature. I do think for the majority of people that are trying to go down in a weight class, one, don't cut as much water weight as you think. Try to get closer to your game day weight as you can. Cutting water can be unhealthy. It can take away from your performance, and it's a lot. There's a lot more variables than just walking around at what weight you want to compete at. Uh, another tip that if you want to get down in a weight class is diet in your off season and diet uh, a little bit more strict and not as long term as you think. So if you want to drop 10 pounds, a normal person might tell you, and this is for competitive powerlifters might drop a pound a week and take a 10 week cut. I actually suggest kind of doing it quick in a five week. Um, so then you can get right back into maintenance or another slight per surplus if you go below your weight class and get back to your strength training. Um, the training while you're cutting or bulking should be very similar. Um, the stimulus you're trying to give your body as a power lifter, a competitive power lifter should be very similar. You may have to handle slightly less loads and slightly less volume as you're cutting uh, because you obviously just have less energy for the gym and less recoverability uh, because lack of calories in your days off or, or the other hours. So when you're bulking, you may be able to handle a little bit more load. You may be able to progress a little bit faster because again, not only do you have more calories for energy, more calories for recovery, uh, but you are gaining slightly uh, more muscle and you're gaining a little bit of fat, which can help in the long term. So hopefully that answers guys' question on what's optimal for nutrition, for power lifting. Uh, the specifics will depend on the individual and that's where the kind of uniqueness snowflake stuff does come in. If brown rice tastes better to you and sits in your stomach better than white rice, go ahead and do it. If you wanna eat a Snickers before your deadlift session because it feels good mentally and physically, go ahead and do it. If candy gives you acne and makes you poop all day long, don't eat a Snickers before you deadlift and that's where the individuality is. But the macronutrients long term, the calorie surplus long-term is what's gonna allow you to get stronger. I appreciate you guys. We'll catch you in the next one, Monday and Thursday. Salam, I'm out.